Hello guys, welcome to another video. I'll be explaining the um, how to get the data for the commitment of trade reports for indices now for the major uh, tr major traded US um, indices. Uh, I'll be looking at the S&P 500 today, but this can be repeated for the Nasdaq, the Dow Jones, mid caps, Russell, emerging markets, Nikkei, etc. As long as the CFTC produces the data. The data I'll be using will be coming from the Metastock Zenith platform provided by Thomson Reuters for retail traders. Uh, links are in the description below if you feel like that this platform can be of assistance to you. Has helped me out a lot, has automated all my spreadsheets and literally I can come in on the Saturday, click refresh on my spreadsheets and the data will automatically update and I can just worry about making actual quality trades. So I'll click refresh here because if you watched the previous videos, commitment trade reports, you know the formulas that I'm using, you know what they're looking at, and you know what I'm comparing them against. So we're looking at the net long, the net positioning of hedge funds using this code here for the S&P 500. So I've just clicked refresh and we've got data for the S&P going back to 1960. And then we've got the positioning going back to 1998, which is a lot of data. So that's around 30 years worth of data there. So if we highlight the two columns, uh, the columns that of data that we're looking at, click insert, insert a line chart, doesn't look like it's very useful just yet, but please do bear with me. So I'll just put a secondary chart there, go back to insert, recommended charts, all charts combo. So yep, for the S&P, we want a line chart. For that, we want an area chart. We want that on a secondary basis. So there we go. And because we're only getting data for the positioning going back to 1998, let's change the scale to 1997, let's say. There we go. So now we've got the S&P and the positioning data since uh, the beginning of the positioning data, essentially. So I like to format the chart a bit more before I start looking at it. it makes it a lot easier to look at. And then, so. Uh, there we go. So now we can start to see the picture to start to form. So what are we looking at? So we can see clearly that when the hedge funds are going long, the S&P does tend to, to rally. Then when they start going short, the S&P does start to sell off. And we can see this relationship throughout. Again, though 30 years of data can be a, a bit hard to look at when you're looking for weekly updates. So if we look at, if we just copy and paste the, sh the, the chart, format the chart to say for the last say, last business cycle. So let's go, I don't know, 2008 shall we go. Now the picture be starts to become a bit more apparent. So we can see hedge funds tended to go a bit short around say 2000, beginning of 2015, the index did nothing. And then we had some two major sell-offs before the hedge funds started to get bullish on the market and away we went since then. And we can see that the buying back of the market recently hasn't been as strong as in previous markets, previous simple runs. So maybe there's more volatility to come. Let's see. We see bearishness and European crisis and whatnot, and then bullishness of the bull run between 2012 to 2014. So this is really helpful when you're looking at equities tradings or um, futures trading, uh, if you're trading the indices in itself. Um, so that's the power of the commitment trade reports, but it doesn't just look at the SPX, you can find other indices. So what I'm going to show you here is something I've prepared earlier. So this is the S&P, but you can also have it for the VIX as well. So that's the volatility index. You can have it for the NASDAQ, which is NQ. You can have it for the Dow Jones. You can have it for the mid caps. You can have it for the Russell 2000, the emerging markets. Uh, the Nikkei, which is Japan's stock exchange, and a whole bunch of other different indices that there are. Um, so that wraps up the 
uh, the the commitment trade reports for indices. Um, the links are in the description for the referral link for the platform and for the user manual, how to go about creating sheets such as this. If you watch the other videos, this is a relatively easy process. Any problems, any suggestions, please give me a comment and the um, in the comment down below. Please do like, share and subscribe, help other traders out. Um, okay guys, I will catch you in the next video.